All right, greetings, and um, it's great to be here again for this webinar series on self-care with chemotones and the blue lotus seat. And for those of you who are joining me now, maybe a little bit later on, and both catching the replay, thank you again for taking the time to learn more about taking care of yourself. Today is October 5th. And today's episode is about facing fears and letting go. And we opened up with one of my favorite tunes, uh, Saturn's Return, because today's horoscope is a little bit about Saturn. So I thought that would be a good way to start. All right, so as usual, we're going to start with our um, horoscope reading. And today we have the astrology chart from Astrology 13. And the, um, there's only a few planets that have really changed that much since we were together last. That would be the moon. The moon is um, it's practically in the sign of Capricorn now, but it's still just a little bit below the basketball court known as Gemini or P, P. Mahi in Hadoukoke. And the other change is Refan, or uh, Saturn, is now in the sign of Ip Scorpio. And Mercury, which is still over here in, in Astoria, Mercury is going retrograde in a few days on October 9th. So we're going to be talking a little bit about, about these things and then seeing how we can apply this to our our own self-healing practice. So yeah, so let's start with the moon. Um, Shasheta. Shasheta is now uh, leaving the sign of communication, the sign of Gemini. And hopefully during her time in Gemini, we um, had some opportunities to build our communication skills. And Rosh Hashetta is the architect, engineer. Um, she's the goddess of books and libraries and astrology, etc. So while she was in the sign of communication, while Mercury was also connected to communication, is still retrograde. That means we had a, a really amazing opal opening, opportunity, portal opening, to have a breakthrough in communication. So as Mercury will be going direct in a few days and the moon is just leaving this sign, we have a few more hours to focus on this, um, this happening. There was so much going on last week with the um, eclipse and the full moon and you know, the equinox was just before that. There's so much going on, you know, so we have a little bit more time to just fully integrate before this portal opening closes. And let's see. Um, 
Well, I'm not really going to talk too much more about the portal of Jehuti because I talked about that a lot in the previous weeks and there's lots of information posted at Tachia.com. But some people would say, you know, um, time to move forward in communications again and you don't have to be leery about your computers breaking and all that stuff. So, um, you know, people are looking forward to that chaotic timing in the past. Uh, but I'm kind of excited about this Scorpio um, with Saturn. Saturn is in Scorpio. And that's why I opened with um, the song Saturn's Return. Okay, yeah, so here we're talking about um, the portal of Jehuti clothing. So before I move on to Saturn, let me sing a song of gratitude to Jehuti. You might already know this tune. I've been singing it while this portal's been open. And it's also um, in honor of Shasheta. I sing, sing for them together in one little song. So I'll just sing a short version. Do a Jehuti. Do a Jehuti. on Saturn, let's take a moment to think about some of the openings and breakthroughs that we did experience in communication. My most recent one was um, just a few days ago when I was leaving the airport. <laughs> yeah, this was definitely some miscommunication going on here. And um, here, let me get the uh, clean up so I can clean up for me. <clears throat> yeah, so I was uh, at this restaurant and had just ordered a veggie burger and they brought me a burger of meat. And I have been eating meat in 30 years. And I took a bite. I didn't swallow it or anything, but I chewed it. And um, I, I just spit it right out. And when I called... Uh, I called them over and asked for a veggie burger, and then I changed my mind and asked for vegetables. And then I was actually just going to pay the bill, and a friend happened to be at the airport, which is kind of weird because I was in Costa Rica. And she was like, girl, it been me. I would have complained. I would have called the manager. I would have done this. I would have done that. And I was like, you're right. So I called the manager over and asked for my whole meal to be comped. And then they were like, no since I had already given them my card, you know, it was right there. And so I don't know why the manager left, but when she left, I just got up and walked out. So uh, and I'm going to sue uh, the corporation because I was sick for the kind of kind of nauseous for the rest of the day, and I was worried about what happened on the plane. So, yeah, so that was another um, Port of Duty opening, and I actually – took, you know, stepped outside of my comfort zone and spoke up for myself. So that was pretty awesome. Yeah, so um, if you had any experiences like that, you know, share them in the, on the event page or drop me a line. Those of you who are going to be watching this replay, just let me know if you had any breakthroughs during this, um, this period while the mood within Gemini and Mercury is still retrograde. Okay. Awesome. 
So yeah, so I've learned how to um, see the gift in these adversities when Mercury's retrograde or any other planets that are retrograde for that matter. I don't see them as like something dreadful. I see the gift in the adversity. Okay, so the return of Saturn. So here is the um, the information from the Heteroscope Handbook about the planet Saturn, which is associated with Geb and Muruga and Hanuman in the uh, Hindu tradition. And also with Saturday, the day of the week, Saturday. So I'm mostly familiar with Saturn from my Saturn's return, which is an event that happens in everyone's year, everyone's life every 28 years has to do with boundaries and limitations and restrictions and rules and laws and um, uh, yeah, obstacles, really obstacles. And Saturn also brings stability and prosperity. So while Saturn is going to be in Scorpio till December, December 2nd, I believe. Um, this is a really good time to deal with our desire because Scorpio, or the sign of it, deals with desires. So, um, actually, Saturn was, Saturn was in Scorpio and then it switched to Libra and then it came back to, to um, Scorpio. So it's been doing a little zigzagging. And so now it's time to deal with limitations on our desires. Now, in this day and age, we're dealing with abundance and prosperity and transformation and purification of all things. This isn't the time for us to be limited by boundaries. This is the time for us to make breakthroughs and move beyond boundaries that no longer serve us. Because we're the ones that put these boundaries in place in the first place. You know, in the first place. So if, if if there's a boundary or a limitation that we've placed there, and we're ready to break through, then then we would be dealing with um, techniques to help us break through. Now, some boundaries we put in place to keep us safe. You know, like for instance, I'm a vegetarian or vegan um, for many reasons, but one of them is to keep me healthy. And when I go uh, when I break one of those boundaries, then it causes me um, poor health. Um, but some boundaries, you know, or restrictions we put, you know, on ourselves with our minds, with doubts and negative thoughts. You know, anytime we say, oh, I can't do that, or I can't afford that. You know, those are the kind of negative boundaries that we need to break. So we're going to be talking about that a little bit more as it um, relates to self-care and uh, taking care of ourselves. Well, this is a bunch of words. <laughs> um, this is something I found at a website called The Cosmic Path. And um, I can use my glasses right now. Hmm. Okay. And so I've uh, quoted this information in the Hedus Post Handbook. Saturn in your birth chart reveals the place where you must learn to be mature in your approach. It points to where your fears are, where you tend to repeat mistakes and therefore feel inadequate or handicapped. Saturn can be the voice of your conscience, the remnants of a parent who restricted you or limited you in early childhood. This planet is known as the great teacher the limiter, the restrictor, karma or and father time, because it puts you through repetitive cycles that turn out to be lessons in becoming responsible for yourself. Saturn functions on the social level of our experience, along with Jupiter, and it represents the place where you feel social stigma less than adequate with regard to others, where you feel judged by others, or afraid to assert yourself for fear of social re reproachment. Eventually, Saturn bestows personal authority in those areas 
where you feel most limited because the discomfort causes you to learn how to deal with the issues that repress you and hold you back. Wow, that's really in alignment with my, um, my experience a few days ago, um, speaking up for myself, complaining about the mistake that they made, and um, following through by, you know, writing about this on social media, of course, but I'm going to write to corporations, uh, players, it was players' cafe or players' restaurant, I don't know what it's called. And then also, um, I've been in touch with my lawyer, and we're going to sue. So I was breaking through a boundary I had set for myself where it's not safe to speak out just for what they said because I didn't want to, you know, cause a scene. And, um, you know, it was uncomfortable for me. But I'm really glad that it did. And then um, Ip is the sign of Scorpio. Now, in horoscope and sidereal astrology, the sign of Scorpio only lasts seven days. It's the shortest, uh, shortest amount of time that the sun spins, spins in any constellation. And so, you know, like it says, you're a true Scorpion. It is very rare. But while Scorpio, uh, Saturn is in the sign of Scorpio, this gives us a t- uh, an opportunity to work on any boundaries we place on our desires. You know, on the one hand, we need to be masters of our desires by not letting them rule us. But on the other hand, we should be, um, well, not should, we can open up to our desires and make sure that we're always working on manifesting what it is we're here to do. Hopefully, when we're doing a lot of work on ourselves, our desire, our our purest, our truest desire is in alignment with our purpose. And if it's not, then there's um, things we can do so that it is, you know, that is the case. So, um, I have another little song I'm going to share. So I don't know if you've heard this song from um, from my release recent album release Saturn's Return. No, uh, I mean the album is called Celestial Folk Music, <laughs> and the song I'm going to sing right now is called The Master of Desire. As the flame is dimmed by the smoke, the bright metal by the run, so is the understanding of man, obscured by the smoke of desire. The rage is like fire, and it's difficult of being extinguished. The fires that the dark mind are at sea. Babies that serve to confound and confuse the discrimination. Be the master of desire. Be the master of desire. Be the master of desire. Yes, be the master of desire. So that would mean, um, you know, conquering desires that are negative and don't serve us, and then also becoming a master of manifesting desires that are in alignment with the higher purpose. Is it um, serve on the higher, rule on the lower, serve on the higher, rule on the lower, serve on the higher, rule on the lower, serve on the higher, rule on the lower. The master of desire. Okay. So the next item I want to deal with, um, and that's coming to the um, area of program dealing with self-care. 
So um, we're talking about breaking through boundaries and no longer serve us and allowing ourselves to manifest what it is we truly desire. So right now I just wanted to go through some different ways of letting go, some of my favorite ways of letting go. Um, well, of course, if you're having physical discomfort, the number one way to let go is fasting. Fasting um, not only purifies your physical body, but it purifies your mental state. Uh, it purifies your spiritual awareness. It gets you closer to the divine. It puts you on a really much higher vibration. And you just feel light. You feel lighter, and you are allowed to let go. There's so much by fasting. Um, I didn't put it on this list, but dancing is another really powerful way to let go of energy, toxic energy that are like causing stagnation in your system. And one of my favorite dances is the spiral dance of serious rising. And that's a dance where um, you're, you're, you're moving every part of your body in circles and spirals, and you're uh, generating energy between your hands, like with raw safety or um, Reiki energy. And depending on the direction that you're moving your hands and the direction that you're spiraling your body, you're either opening things up and letting things go or um, building things up and making things stronger. So, um, like I mentioned a few weeks ago with the spiral diagram, when you uh, allow your energy to spiral upward in the counterclockwise direction, that's a way of letting go of removing blocks and eliminating toxins. So I wanted to make sure we added in their movement. Dancing, during the spiral dance, and of course yoga, any, any type of movement. But when you're working with energy, being aware of the direction of the flow of the energy. So like again, counterclockwise and spiraling upward is the direction of letting go and removing toxins and eliminating blocks. Uh, another amazing way of letting go is journaling, writing in your journal. Um, and not so much just writing about things that aren't going so well for you, like, oh, I lost my job and oh, this and oh, that. You know, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's how I used to journal, <laughs> just writing about all the things that aren't going well. But in this way, and I'm talking about in journaling, um, you're, you say, I release and let go of this. I release and let go of the shock associated with losing my job. I release and let go of the fear. You know, so it's an intention. You're setting the intention of letting go. Uh, you could say, when I'm out jogging today, I'm going to let go of my stress around, you know, my new, um, my new uh, client or my new workmate. So um, when you're writing in your journal, you don't just talk about what you want to let go of. You affirm it. I release and let go of this. And so when you're writing in your journal, you're, you know, you're, you're, um, writing is another way of, of uh, making things manifest. So when you're writing about what you're letting go, then you're just you know, making it even more so. Honest communication. If you've got something on your chest from, you know, um, a discussion or argument you had with someone, or if there's something you need to uh, express to your employee or uh, your, you know, someone you work with, or someone you work for, if you just stay silent about it, nothing's going to be resolved. Nothing's going to move. The energy isn't going to move. However, if you you know, express yourself honestly, calmly, from a very peaceful uh, state, then you're going to be able to shift the energy. Because once the sounds are out of your, out of your body, then the other person can hear what's bothering you and then they can take action. But if you never express it and you're just sitting there wondering why they're not doing what you want them to do, then it's only going to make you sick. 
you know, it's only going to cause energy um, imbalance in your own system. You know, like what happened with me a few days ago. I was, I didn't want to upset them, so I was just going to allow myself to be nauseous. But once I spoke up and spoke out and took action, or didn't take action, I felt a lot better. And once I um, take some of you know, playing court or whatever, I know I'll feel even more better. Okay, another way of, of letting go is forgiveness. Uh, it's one thing to communicate with someone how you feel, and then you have to do your part, you know, like we talked about before, Ho'oponopono, you have to do your forgiveness work. You don't have to say it to them out loud, you know, I forgive you for running into my car, or I forgive you for, um, you know, um, whatever it is. For I forgive you for firing me. You don't, you know, you don't tell that to the people, but you do your work. You can do the ponopono, or you can journal. But the main thing is to get that energy, that um, that um, regret or um, not, not regret, bitterness. You know, getting those feelings out of your system, that's the most important thing, is moving the energy. So sometimes, well not sometimes, always forgiving others and then of course forgiving yourself is a way to let go. And these are also ways to break through the boundaries that I was talking about. Um, feeling restricted in some way, you know, these are ways to get past those boundaries. And of course, skip tones. Um, uh, chemotones is a great way to let go of toxic emotions or toxic thoughts. Um, and I'll have a little demonstration of that in a moment. But before we get to the chemotone segment, I have a little video I want to share with you. And uh, let's see how this will work. But the main thing is about removing blocks from the past to make way for new possibilities. And sometimes there are blocks that we're so comfortable with that we just hold on to them even though they no longer serve us, like habits. You know, um, habits or uh, relationships with people that, you know, uh, the relationship is no longer serving you. The only way you're going to make new relationships is to let go of some of these old ones. Okay. So, um, Last uh, last week, I had the amazing opportunity to go to a retreat. It's a mastermind retreat about um, improving our mindset and opening up to abundance. And so, uh, two of the activities were all about letting go, letting go of fears, letting go of doubts, letting go of limitations that we place on ourselves with just our minds and our thoughts. So I wanted to share with you all um, my experience with letting go. So here's the first one. Let me blow up the screen. We actually went zip lining, and this is not something I ever thought I would do or want to do, but you know, I was all the <clears throat> was all the way there, and that was the uh, exercise. And um, you know, it was in Costa Rica, we did 13 of these rounds over the beautiful rainforest. And the first six or seven, I was kind of nervous, but by right around the six or seventh one, I was determined to let go. I wasn't gonna miss this opportunity to let go and just lean back. And I gave myself permission to let go. I said, I affirmed it out loud. I released and let go of my fears and doubts. And I gave myself permission to let go. And so, this is what happened. Pretty amazing. I don't know if I'll, if this will show up on the screen. 
But I actually conquered my fears. I let go. And once I let go the first time, it was so easy to just keep letting go. And I, I couldn't believe I had been afraid. But uh, this experience allowed me to face my fears. You know, there was triple security locks and people were there, you know, and and even if you got stuck halfway across and you're dangling over the jungle, the, the guys there, they would scoot their way out and bring you back in. So I just wanted to say that zip lining is, over the rainforest is another great way to let go. And, you know, the whole time I was zipping along, I was visualizing different things that I wanted to, um, to release and let go of. And so that gave me a great opportunity. And then at the end of the retreat, we had um, set goals for ourselves, you know, for when we got back and things we wanted to do with our lives. And so um, we had these, you know, we all set our intentions. And then we had this exercise with these um, lanterns. And, you know, we lit the lanterns and said our prayers and reset our intentions. And then we just let them go. <laughs> yeah, so that little exercise, you know, it floated and floated and floated until it looked like a star in the sky and um, it was really empowering to set the intention and let it go. And um, yeah, and it just kept going and going and going until we couldn't see it anymore. But that's another way to release and let go, you know, to let go of your intentions, to put them out there into the universe. So and so uh, now we'll shift over to the Timotone segment. here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's my dog. <laughs> He's ready for dinner. Okay, so when we're talking about releasing and letting go, there's really two, only two forms we need to deal with. Okay. So, but first, you know, we always start with the um, the own fork, the grounding. So right now I have them on my um, my creativity chakra, my womb chakra. in the heart chakra. Get the tone grounded in the body. And then the womb chakra up to the heart chakra. So for a removing blocks, we're talking about the zodiac form. This is the one for eliminating blocks and toxins and um, negative thought patterns. Um, it's good for like reprogramming the DNA, reformatting the DNA. And then we have in the self care kit the Chiron form. So for the wounded healer. So we're just gonna, um, you know, work on the chakras. Removing blocks, 
maybe fighting there. It's been great for letting go of negative thought, <laughs> negative thought patterns. And you notice that I come up, because when you're going up, that's to remove blocks. And then when I come down, the energy of creation and manifestation, the direction. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, no, to me I'll play, I don't want to get that. So the next thing would be um, set intention what you want to release and let go of. So, well, I'm still working on my money flow. I'm always working on money flow, right? Because it's connected to um, healing my root chakra. I kind of like go in cycles. So, probably that might be a really good topic for the next week. So, right now, I'm going to release and let go any blocks my financial freedom. I'm using my color, whatever is keeping me from manifesting my vision. It's safe to let that go. I'm using my color, whatever is causing me to have cloudy vision. And also in the environment, you know. If you're fortunate, you have some of these goddess work. They always make everything extra wonderful. <laughs> So that's a little mini self-care session just on um, reducing and letting go and setting intentions. Let's see, another, another um, thing to let go of would be uh, grief. You know, grief is stored in the lungs. So if you have, you know, congestion or if you're just feeling really emotional or sad, you might um, just look on these lung things. And with
I feel like <laughs> doing a little bit there. It's always good to take your time to get out from the, you know, the healing space, not just rush right into the next thing. <sighs> okay. Alrighty then. Back over here. Okay, well, um, that's really what I have for you today. This is a little shorter session than usual. I want to thank you for joining me today, and for those of you on the replay, I uh, hope you can make it next week so we can, if you have any live questions or anything, we could um, answer your questions. And that's all for now. Peace. A tap.